Philippe, that was quite the afternoon. How did you view it? I think you guys are really happy to see games like that. I was not so happy about the beginning, <laughs> clearly. So uh, my Scottish assistant never worked for that, but uh, better not use in a press conference. <laughs> so it's the worst scenario you can have in an old firm game to go behind after one minute, also in the way we went behind. So that's a big blow at that moment uh, for the team, for the fans, for everything. Uh, afterwards, we didn't go down, but we were not good enough on the ball. It was also a special situation today with the, with the wind. It was difficult to, to play a really, really good combination play, but we didn't manage to do enough. We had a few chances still in the first half um, to score. Celtic had also a few. It's a, it's a pity because this thing comes back. Uh, I think every manager in the world Every player in the world uh, wants this rule to be changed because I know with the rule it's penalty now, but if a ball is brought in at that speed in front of a goal and it's touched by the head and it's deflected and you jump up your and that moment you see that it's deflected, you want to take your arm away, but it touches your arm. <laughs> with the rules now, it's penalty, so nothing to say about decision of referee or VR or any. But everybody who's, play, who's playing football says too many penalties are given in that way without there's a good purpose for it. So that's frustrating to go 0-2 into halftime. It could have been 1-2, then you hope uh, uh, in that way to stay in the game. And then the second half we, we showed our real face, I think. We showed the real, the real things that I want to see. This, uh, never stopping um, team that that has a lot of resilience, that has a lot of hunger, desire to change the results, to do the right things, to create chances, not to give away chances. And then it became a really, yeah, for you guys, crazy scenario. For us, the scenario that I wanted, not with uh, the 2-2 two -two and then the 2-3, the of course. But we deserve and clearly deserve at least a point today, what we've shown. And uh, I think we're the, at the end the moral winners of this afternoon. Because uh, a few months ago, for sure not, this team could have reacted after 0-2 in an old firm. And I don't know if many, many teams in the past could have done it. Um, so it's a hard thing in a very important game like this to go 0-2 behind. Um, to also feel the disappointment of your fans when you come in half time in the dressing room to turn that around. And because of that, I'm really proud of my boys. The big did half time deal in terms of just getting the players in, getting your message across, making that change? It's crucial, of course. It's crucial to change the mindset in that moment. If you stick, stay sticked in the past, then you can never come back and for sure not the way they did because it could have been a victory also today. Uh, and we're really unlucky about that. And again, um, it's a small fault, yes. It's a little bit disappointing that 60 meters or 70 meters away of the goal, but those are the rules. So VR did, uh, did a good job in that, although I would have preferred they didn't do a good job in that way. But it is what it is. Yeah, but they all lead it by example. It's it's difficult to pick only Tev out because I prefer he don't make these mistakes the first minute also. Um, but he showed the personality, yes, to, to take the penalty and also to take the penalty in that way. With really big conviction, desire to score the goal and then to, to put the perfect penalty. It's not easy and a lot of players break after making a fault like that in the beginning of the game, they go down mentally and he, he has the capacity to, to switch on again and, uh, and to be even more hungry to make the difference. Felipe, Rogers was unhappy with the Rangers penalty award. What was your view of it? What was your view on it? My view? Yeah. I, I thought it was a penalty at the time. I, I think if somebody kicks your knee, 
if that's not a penalty anymore, okay, yeah. But everybody can have his opinion. I think the referee and the VR did a, did a really good job today. Although I was disappointed that eh? not getting a, this goal because of the small fall in the first half and then this penalty situation of Connor. So I think we had much more reason to be unhappy about things, but we are not because I think and the referee and the VR did a good job today. And we, if it's the case, we need to settle. So like Rabi was talking about the, the story behind the goal and you were having a conversation about the De Bruyne goal yesterday. How happy were you for him to score that goal and, and what a finish to see your goal? Yeah, it's something we've been working on with him and with several players already for a couple of months. Um, so it's not something, okay, you do it one time in training and then it happens. I, I try to, to use examples of, of good players. Um, to show my, my team things they can improve and okay this is now one detail there are many others and uh, Kevin is a good good example in that way we showed also things about about David Beckham was also really good in that way to go way up the goal and then and then putting this ball in control in the corners because for me it was one of the things that Rabi missed before in his game and that he had chances to shoot and, and to show these qualities and that he missed too many many opportunities like that, because it's really difficult to to defend with his speed and agility. But there needs to be an end product, and that's crucial. So I'm really happy that it's not the first time because uh, uh, last game he scored also like that. Um, that is now understanding this part of the game, and the game is about so many details. It's our task as a, as a coaching staff to 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 let them learn a lot of details that they never thought about before. So I'm really happy for him and for the team. Can we talk about Nederlands alsjeblieft? It was not only the most in more than yeah, 10 years. The derby, the old firm, was also the most intense, I think. How have you experienced it? Your first time here at Ibrox? Ah, very rustig. No, it was a roller coaster. This wedstrijd. Sorry, guys, that I speak Chinese now. It was a een echte rollercoaster, maar die is belangrijk om dan uh, je emoties onder controle te houden. En daar zijn we de voorbije maanden met het uh, team heel, heel hard over bezig geweest aan, aan het werken, om dat beter te maken. En daarom ben ik ook heel trots op hen om uh, de manier dat zij de tweede helft gereageerd hebben. Uh, uit een moeilijke situatie om te doen wat ze kunnen doen. En, uh, en ik zie dit, dit team nu vijf maanden lang maand na maand groeien. En dat is hetgeen dat we verder moeten zetten de volgende maand. Je hebt hier het geloof, de mentaliteit teruggebracht. Ik heb gesproken met de Schotse fans hier in de straten. Hoe voelt het voor jou om hier te werken? Uh, ik denk dat er weinig mooie plaatsen zijn uh, in de wereld om te werken. Omdat deze stad vol passie is van voetbal. Het is uh, ongelooflijk passioneel hoe dat de mensen voor of tegen zijn. En uh, ik ben heel blij in deze club te zijn. En dit is een club naar mijn hart met uh, dezelfde passie dat ik zelf heb voor het voetbal. Well, no, it, it's nothing interesting for me. You guys can fill a lot of uh, pages about that. It's for me, one thing is important. We showed what we are about in the second half. So that's why we're the moral winners also to come back in that way after 0-2. I don't think it happened too much in old firm games. But now it's putting focus on, on Dundee, big game again. And all the focus is on that, not on, uh, on the ranking or the points. So you will not catch me saying th these things or thinking these things the next couple of weeks. That's something for maybe the last two, maybe the last game. That depends how many points uh, other teams take. I don't have any control of that. We're going to go game by game with, with our squad. Philippe, how closely are you watching the, the weather in Dundee over the next two days? Not, because it's not my task. Uh, I try to control the controllable. I put all my energy, attention, every second that my eyes are open, put my energy in that. I don't control uh, the weather forecast. I'm not a, um, a greenkeeper, how you say this? A groundsman. I'm not a groundsman. My wife knows. I'm really <laughs> bad in that. So, uh, no, I, I have other qualities, uh, luckily, and I'm going to focus on that. So, those are also not our responsibilities. Those are the responsibilities of, of Dundee 
and of the league also to see that the product of football that you guys and the broadcasts are paying a lot of money for that it's played in a, in a normal way. Last one, Stephen. Philip, what does it say about the squad to be in such a difficult position at half time and then late in the game to go behind again but to fight back and show that spirit and what does it say for the title challenge in the running? It's, it's a symbol of it, maybe, and it's a good reference game in that way. It's not the first one. We had all, also others, but this is more significant because it's an old firm game. It's against a very good team because Celtic is a very good team. So to react like that, it's a huge thing. It's a strong thing. And it's the thing that I demand. I demand that from the first second I stepped into this building, that I never want to see players giving giving up with their heads down or I always want them to fight in every situation and they did already in the past but this one is, is, is even bigger because of the, the importance of this game and the quality of the opponent so this will give a lot of confidence, a lot of belief but it's also important to stay humble and to be ready for the Dundee game and to do that from the first second of the game and not to give belief on the, on the opponents like we did today. Thanks, Dave. Thank you. Thank you.